Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at measuring a room and modeling it in SketchUp. Um, so I'm going to talk about my preference of how I would go about modeling this thing. But at the same time, uh, one of the big things is how I'm going to go about measuring the room I'm going to model too. I'm not going to go into great detail. We're not going to put uh, a whole bunch of stuff in there, but enough information that I could use this model for like measuring for furniture or maybe if I want to do a takeoff on how much paint I need, something like that. So just a basic quick and dirty model uh, put together in a few minutes from some simple dimensions. Let's hop in. All right, so this is what I started with. I grabbed a piece of paper and I drew what I needed to get out of this room. So looking down, this is a door that opens into this kind of little alcove. There's a window on this wall. And then back here, there's a closet with a bifold slider right here. So I drew up the things that I know I needed dimensions for. The uh, dimensions here would be the interior of the room. The closet, this would be the outside of the closet. So I do need to acknowledge that. Once I was done with that, um, hop over here. I went through that same drawing and I just added wh what dimensions do I need? Where I put dimension lines, any place I needed to get a measurement. So in some cases I have here my overall width, length of the room, and then locations of different pieces of wall, that sort of thing. I just figured out to draw this, what all would I need to have? And when I was done with that, I used a combination of laser measurer and my little tape measure to go through and get all of the dimensions that I want to put in here, as well as a couple of vertical dimensions. How high is the ceiling? Uh, how tall is the window? How tall is the door? That sort of thing. But these are all my dimensions. You can see right here I have, oh, I'm, I apologize for my handwriting, but this is about eight inches and this is about seven inches. Um, some of this stuff is going to be a little bit off and I, I really, my big thing is if I make everything aligned to the overall dimensions, I can play with a little bit of slop here and just center the door, that kind of thing. So um, yeah, I was conscious of that as I took those dimensions in. So something you'll notice, if I look at this, as I pull these in, this is obviously not to scale, right? Because if I look at Sri here, I don't, I, I, I don't know exactly how tall Sri is, but I don't think, I mean, my office is bigger than that. So if we come in here with the line right here to measure this door, it tells me the door's a just over a foot, and that's that's obviously not right. Um, I know it's not right because I have a dimension right here that says it's 30 inches. So these are not to scale, but that's okay. I would not want to use these lines to draw anyhow because these are just arbitrarily drawn. There is no scale drawn in here. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to come in and draw lines to scale that represent what I actually took here. So if you did this, you don't have to worry about saving copies of these two things. I just did that to tell the story of how I got to where I was at. Now what I want to do is I want to use these dimensions to draw this room in 3D real quick. So I'm going to start on the outside edge. So here I have a nine foot eight edge. So I'm going to come this way, nine foot, oops, foot eight, enter. And then this goes across this way, 13 foot nine. So I'm going to go this way, 13 foot nine. And let me cut you off. If you have a burning urge to say, why aren't you using metric? It's because I've lived my whole life in the United States, and this is the only way I've ever learned dimensions. I understand how metric works. I just don't have uh, experience with it. So if I try to do with this with metric, I'd be drawing kind of blind because I don't know what those dimensions mean. All right, so I'm going to come up here. This says three foot six. So I'm going to come up this way. Three foot six, enter. That's going to give me an endpoint right there. Three foot six. And then I'm going to come this way. This says two, four and a half. So I'm going to go this way, two foot, 4.25, enter. And then I'm just going to take that line all the way up. All right, there is most of my walls. So I'm going to grab all of this and I'm going to offset. Actually, I should have done this first. I should have done this here, but let's get rid of that. And I'll say offset and I'm going to pull this out. The width here doesn't really matter. In fact, I could leave it as just paper thin walls if I wanted to, but I'm going to get a little, that bothers me a little bit. So I'm just going to offset this, like I'm going to say five inches. Okay, That gives me my where my exterior walls are. Now, if I come back in here, come back up three foot six, come over 
two foot, 4.25, and then all the way up. Now I have all my walls where I need them to be. And I can, again, I can grab this, this edge and this edge, offset that, and we'll pull that in. Same thing, I'll just go five inches. Three and a half inch wall, roughly, with some finish on the inside and outside. It's about that. Okay, that looks great. What about, what next? Doors, we gotta put our doors and windows in. So I'm gonna start over here with my window. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I wanna make sure when I put in this dimension of two foot 11, I come down from the top here. So I'm gonna come down two foot 11, and then at that point, I'm just gonna draw an edge across here. And then same thing, I come up this way, two foot 11. That's what's on my, my drawing right there. And if I connect, where did that go? There we go, right there, connect that together. It should be three foot 10, let's check. Three foot 10, perfect, that's my window location. Let's come over here and do the door. So I got a little four inch gap, so I'm gonna come over four, enough room for a trim and for my door to swing all the way open. And then I'll come 30 inches. So at this point, again, with the, the purpose of this model being a rough estimate of where stuff is and that kind of thing, it's something I can use for takeoffs, that sort of thing. I'm not real worried about things like, is this inside of trim? Is this inside of frame? Is this the slab of the door? Um, it really doesn't matter for what I'm doing right now. All I can say is that when you measure, just take that into account. If you're measuring inside a frame and you want to model the frame, make sure your frame goes out from there. If you're measuring the framed opening because you're framing something, then make sure when you draw your trim, your trim comes in. So if I was to come through and draw my, I actually pulled this off of the, the trim. So if I was to come in and, you know, finish detailing out this door, I would want to do something like this to show where my trim is uh, because that was where the dimension was pulled from. Again, you can model to whatever point you want for what your model is. Uh, just make sure you're consistent and you, you reference to it the same way. All right, so here's where I was saying I might have a little bit of discrepancy. The door is four foot 10. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna arbitrarily pick a point right here. Then I'm gonna come down four foot 10 inches, enter. And then I'm gonna put that right there. Now I'm gonna grab this rectangle and I'm gonna move it from the middle. So I'm gonna move back and forth like this. And uh, I'm gonna keep it on axis and align with the middle of this back wall. What that does is that gives me the same dimension here, I'm sorry, on the inside here and here. Now, that's great, that's five and a half inches on either side, but on the outside it looks like it's really pushed over this way. So what I want to do is I actually want to inference, again, in an avoidance to have to do math, I'm going to draw an edge right here. That edge is the length of this wall from the inside of this wall to the outside corner here. So when I move this from the middle and I align to the middle of that, now this, this door right here is going to be appeared uh, centered from the outside rather than the inside. So a quick line just to reference off of keeps you from having to do a whole lot more work as far as figuring out where that goes. All right, let's, let's get this 3D. I'm just gonna use this, pull it up. I did put right here that the ceiling height is eight feet, so I can just pull it up and type eight foot, enter. Do the same thing right here, pull that up. Awesome. Now I just have to pull my doors and windows up. So I'll do a window first. So the window is three foot to the bottom sill. So I'm gonna pull that up 36 inches. Then the window itself is three foot 10. So what I'm gonna do is grab this face right here. I'm going to option move it straight up, three foot 10, enter, and then I can use that to push pull up and get the rest of my shape there. If I think I might be moving it around or something, I might leave these lines that uh, separate those faces from the rest of the wall. In this case, this is what I'm looking for, again, being the, the, the purpose of my model. All right, my doors are six foot nine off the ground. So what I can do is I can grab this and grab this. And at the same time, if I have more doors, I could grab more of them too. I can option move them straight up. Six foot nine inches, enter. And then push pull that up like that. Double click here to pull up the same. And then at that point, I can just do whatever cleanup I want. Um, including if I want to get rid of these lines on the walls, there's not really a separation of floor type there, so I probably don't even want those. Um, clean up these extra edges. And at that point, in just a couple minutes, I did go from 
my hand-drawn, hand-pulled dimensions to a decent 3D model to start with. Again, I'm gonna reiterate this. If I had to frame, I probably would have done this a little bit different. Uh, if I was looking for something that's not here, trim, uh, whatever the other stuff is, I would wanna add that in, pull those dimensions. But what I really wanna do in this case was get a quick and simple layout based on this one hand-drawn, hand-pulled dimensions. Um, I think all in all, I think, our, so we're about 10 minutes in the video. That's with a whole bunch of talking and explaining. Realistically, probably, I don't know, three to five minutes of modeling at most, and to pull these dimensions, probably about the same amount of time. So doing this step, I know this, like I said, I'm gonna reiterate this, but figuring out what you need to model, and then figuring out what dimensions you need to model that, and then pulling those dimensions I, some people like to sit down with a laptop and pull a dimension, put it in, pull a dimension, put it in. For me, it's so much easier to sit down with a piece of paper, get all the dimensions I need in one run, and then come model it all quickly here. So you do this however makes sense to you. But for me, that was the quickest, easiest way to get those pulled dimensions from my office into my 3D model. Um, we've had questions for this kind of workflow several times. So I thought, hey, you ask, we say we'll do it. So we did it. So uh, hopefully that helps. I apologize if you're an intermediate or advanced user who was like, oh, I really wanted to see some organic modeling or something like that. Um, that'll come up too at some point. Uh, if you're a beginner, hopefully this is a, a little thing that helped you along. If you have a specific project where you're trying to do something like this specifically, then I really hope that worked out for you. Um, if you like that model, click like down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Have you done something like this before? Have you done it in a different way? Um, have you done something similar to this and I didn't explain what you needed to know there? Or do you have an idea for a video totally unrelated to what we just did? Regardless of the point, put those in the comments. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.